All right. Um, so let's dig a little bit more into this uh, radian measure. Um, just to go through the details there in case you're, you're not too familiar with how do you measure angles in radians. Um, the key is to remember that radians are defined so that this arc length formula works, right? So that the length of a sector of a circle um, is just the angle that is spanned by that sector times the radius. Uh, and since we're working with the radius of one, right, that means that a given um, length, a given segment of the circle is just equal to the angle that's spanned. So that means that one revolution um, in, in radians is equal to the circumference. Okay? And we know that circumference is given by 2 pi times the radius, and our radius is 1. So the circumference is 2 pi. Okay? So that means that 1 revolution is 2 pi radians, which is as we know, 360 degrees, okay? So all the way around, starting, starting here, so by default, zero is when you're, you know, we measure angles from the positive x-axis. So here we're at zero. One trip around, we've gone through two pi radians. So that means that at half a trip around, we've gone pi, okay? Pi radians, okay? A quarter trip is half of that, so half of pi is pi over 2, right? And so we started at 0. If we go all the way around, we're at, we're at 2 pi, right? Um, three quarters of a trip, three quarters of 2 pi is, is going to be 3 pi over 2. Then you get to 2 pi. And then you can subdivide further, right? So what you might have referred to as a 45 degree angle is now, well, it's half of a right angle, so pi over 4, OK? Um, so this is a 90 degree angle, right? So a third of that, a 30 degree angle, would be, we divide by that by 3, we get pi over 6. So pi over 6 is going to be somewhere around here. Okay. On the other side, you have pi over 3. Uh, in degrees, that would be a 60 degree angle, right? So we have 30, 45, 60, 90, right? And now you can keep going around the circle. So here, you're going to have 2 pi over 3, also known as 120 degrees, right? Then, oops, 3 pi over 4. Then 5 pi over 6, right? And then down to pi. And you can continue those all the way down. We can go the other of the direction here. So extend these two diameters. Like so. 7 pi over 6. This is going to be... 5 pi over 4. This is going to be 4 pi over 3. 3 pi over 2. This is 5 pi over 3. 7 pi over 4. 
and finally 11 pi over 6, right? That completes your, your unit circle, right? Now, of course, there are, there are lots of other angles uh, that you could mark. Uh, the reason that I'm, I've gone with these ones is that these are the angles for which we can compute exact values for the sine and cosine functions, right? Uh, at least the ones that we can easily compute exact values for. Uh, a lot of people get concerned because we've, we've marked so many angles around the circle that, you know, oh my god, I'm going to have to memorize all these things. Um, it's not so bad. The only ones you really have to remember are the first quadrant angles. And this is one of the nice things about working with radian measure, okay, is that if you look at the denominators, it's going to tell you what is kind of the corresponding first quadrant angle, right? So if somebody hands me like 7 pi over 6, right? I say, okay, 7 pi over 6. Well, I see a 6 on the bottom. So the angle in the first quadrant that matches it is pi over 6. And, or if I see like, like 7 pi over 4 or 5, 3 pi over 4, right? These ones with 4s on the bottom, they, they correspond to pi over 4. And it turns out that once you know the coordinates for these ones, the other points are just reflections, right? So this point for 7 pi over 6, right, it's opposite that one. So if I know the coordinates for this point, I know that in quadrant 3, I change the sign on both coordinates, right? Both coordinates are negative down here. So if I know that point, I just put minus signs in front of the two coordinates, and now I have that one, right? Same thing for all these ones down here. I just take these ones, I put minus signs out front, right? Um, if I'm in quadrant 4, I know that x is positive, y is negative, so again, I reflect across, right? If I have the pi over 3 one, switch the sign on the y coordinate, and I have the, I have the values for 5 pi over 3, right? So, so these, these are the, the basic ideas that you use, right? So you don't have to memorize the whole circle. You don't even have to remember, you know, these like cast rule or anything like that that you might have learned. Um, as long as you remember in each of the four quadrants which coordinates are positive, which are negative, um, and you remember these values, you can, you can work things out for, for any of these points on the unit circle. Um, the other thing that, of course, might come up is um, somebody gives you something like, uh, I don't know, 31 pi over 6, and asks you to calculate sine or cosine of that angle. And you're like, well, 31, that's, that's not on my circle. Like, what do I do with that? Right? And so what you do is you have to kind of think in terms of, of 2 pi. So you have to say, so 2 pi would be, if I multiply by 6 over 6, that's 12 pi over, over 6, right? So this would be, I could do 12 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. I'm up to 24, and then I'd need 7 pi over 6, right? So you can kind of break things down like that. So, so this is a full revolution, right? That's a 2 pi. That's a 2 pi. And so this angle is starting here, going once around, twice around, and then around to 7 pi over 6, right? Um, so if, you, if you're dealing with angles that are outside that range from 0 to 2 pi, you just simply add or subtract multiples of 2 pi until you get something that's one of these, uh, and then you can work out the answer. Uh, so in the next video, we'll tell you what some of those coordinates are so that you can start assigning values to the sine and cosine functions.